Now I know that was a lot of amazing art, and you guys are probably like, wow, that was a lot. Well, I gotta tell you, that is only the tiniest fraction of the new art that you're gonna see in the Cataclysm expansion. I'd also let you know that for coming to this panel, you're going to see a special treat. Near the end of this panel, we're gonna show you something that's never been seen before in the entire world. So stay, stick around, is what I'm saying. Um, now, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it off to Eric Browning, uh, lead prop artist on World of Warcraft. Hi, uh, one of the things that the prop team is uh, tasked with doing is making what's called a culture kit. And a culture kit is all the objects that the designers use to describe a certain culture. And it could include things, uh, but it's not limited to the following list. Oh, and this is the name of my presentation, Making Art for a Really Old New Faction That Doesn't Exist Yet. The greatest prop ever made. Gary may show you something you've never seen before, but I'm going to show you the greatest <laughs> prop ever made. Nice. <laughs> so just stay till the end of mine, and then you can leave. So we could be making uh, machines, spells, bombs, carts, tents, paintings, torches, chandeliers, chests, <laughs> and tables, and wagons, and crates, and bones, food, plates, other chests, magical thingies, gnomish doohickeys, spider webs, statues, more chests, coral, different chests, new chests, <laughs> urns, candles, burning piles, <laughs> burning piles of stuff, gems, tombstones, PHGC, potentially harmful goblin contraptions, <laughs> cannons, fences, gates, lanterns, rugs, and soup. So when the expansion was still known as World Breaker, uh, work, work began on the Twilight Hammer kit. Now, from the beginning, they were going to be uh, the face of the expansion in a lot of ways, with an entire zone and dungeon devoted to them. So what was once uh, Cho'Gal and his clan uh, is now an enormous um, world-hating cult that involves all of the races of Azeroth, as far as I know all of them. So because of that, we assumed that we could use existing art, because we're using all existing cultures. So we figured we could just do some research, get all the art that had been done for Twilight Hammer before this, and leverage that and take maybe two to three weeks tops to knock it out. There's all the art that we found. <laughs> uh, you'll notice it has some Twilight on it. It also has a hammer and some festive colors. And this dates back to uh, Warcraft 2, and this is a Chris Metzen drawing, so this goes way back, but there was never any real kit made for them. So we didn't have much to start with, uh, and the job of the art team becomes, how do we depict a culture that uh, everybody has really seen already, I and mean, we've already seen all these cultures, but how do we depict them as something new and different and give them sort of their own stamp? Well, there are a lot of cults in WoW, so we started with the approach we normally take, which is to use, uh, give them a tent, a brazier, a couple of pots and pans to bang together, and some crazy magic stuff. There's a tent. This is crazy magic stuff. Notice the colors, we're grabbing at straws in a way because the, we looked at the banner and we have a symbol and we have colors. So we started trying to pull the colors and see if that was maybe a good jumping off point. More crazy magic stuff. Magic and crazy stuff. And I show you this because even the smoke had that sort of rainbow color in it. The problem with the colors is we started to draw comparisons to another faction that's already in WoW. And we were not looking for a traveling rainbow circus of wicked intent. We needed something scarier for these guys. They're supposed to be the villains. So another angle we explored was the, the old god connection. Now artists on WoW love old gods, they love Cthulhu. It's, it's something every artist wants secretly to make uh, Cthulhu. So immediately, the Cthulhu references start. This is not Max Rebo, I need you to know that. Oh. It's a faceless one. These lamps have uh, the same faceless one sort of worked into it. 
And like I said, all artists like to make Cthulhu. This is my version. <laughs> Not in the game, didn't make the cut. Uh, another safe bet is to fall back and start making some barrels. <laughs> <laughs> and some crates, because every race on Azeroth has barrels and crates. Another crate, a magical crate. Now, we started making some furniture. It had sort of a gothic um, forsaken look almost to it. At this point, we started looking at the metal, thinking maybe, maybe the metal is, is going to be the angle that we uh, follow. And here is classic Blizzard art direction. It's a wagon with giant knives on the front. It has bat wings, spikes on the wheels, and it's covered in blood, and they put a dragon head on the front just in case. <laughs> it's perfect. Here we started using actual dragon parts, bones and wings. And then this part, this was kind of a turning point here because we built out Dark Whisper Gorge, or rather designers set it up using a lot of this arch. And that's where we realized we really need a lot more for this, uh, for this uh, faction. So at this point, the dungeon team started making um, some buildings to go along with it. And a sacrificial altar for sacrificing. And I like this one because it has sort of a whimsical uh, top on it and giant blades again and scary wheels and blood. It looks like a happy murder wagon. <laughs> and here you can see that the, uh, well, they have carpets. The logo or the, uh, the corporate branding of Twilight's Hammer is starting to appear everywhere. And here's a good look at it. They, we redesigned it to, to be a little slicker than the old one. So that's the one you see. And this is the final um, banner that you see in all the dungeons. And here you can see the props are starting to take on their own look. This is pretty much what you're seeing in the game now. Um, it has the dragon thing going on with the scales. There's some purple fire, lots of knives and blades attached to it. And at this point, it comes about that elementium for the Twilightians, or the Twilight Hammerians, <laughs> is their sort of key mineral. It's like Serenite was in Lich King. Um, every culture needs sort of a birthmark, something that really identifies them, and we started to think that Elementium is going to be it for, for these guys. So one of the artists made um, this, which is a, a, like a demo of what Elementium ore could look like. It's a really expensive effect, and it would have blown up everybody's computer had we used it as is. Because when we like something in the game, we put it everywhere. So, like the Northrend Fog. Um, it would have been like making armor sets out of Dalaran. Which I, I like to call Dalaranium. So the engine, uh, the engine guys had to write a special shader for us. And all we needed to do is take that and apply it to all the props that had been made already. Which, as luck would have it, was all the props. All of them. <laughs> so. Uh, and then that shader got used on Deathwing as well, and that's sort of a cross-pollination that the team does constantly. Well, it turns out that Twilight Hammer priests are supposed to summon this up from the ground. And the gothic uh, kind of sculpted look wasn't really uh, appearing like something that had been spawned up. So we started thinking, well, this is like a forged version, and then there'll be more of an organic one that is the summon stuff. And this is probably the first prop that where we tempted to show a more organic summoned up version, a barricade. And here is how it is now in the game. This is like a, a, uh, like a, a spire of summoned elementium. And then you know, as you get further into uh, like the Twilight Highlands, you'll see more and more of this. Um, here you can see it wrapped around this horrible dragon drying thing. Um, so to finally uh, tie all this together, it's reason that the Twilight Hammer would have a more structured appearance um, back at their home base, or where they start, which is the uh, Bastion of Twilight. That's that, a dungeon. And then the further out they got out into like Twilight Highlands, you'd see more and more of the spawned up organic stuff, and you'd see the props that they had, or they don't call them props, but all their stuff that they brought with them uh, in wagons covered with blood. Here is Twilight Hammer now as it is in the game. So this is Dark Whisper Gorge. And this is Twilight Highlands near the Citadel. 
And this is Deep Home. So while we're doing all these changes and this whole look is evolving, we're working on other cultures as well, uh, such as the wild hammer uh, dwarves. Notice the names. They're very similar. So this led to some interesting um, mix-ups. <laughs> wild hammer dwarves, uh, they like stone throwers, siege weapons, and they like griffins. They're griffin riders. The twilight hammer likes none of that. So here is the Twilight's Hammer Stone Thrower. <laughs> not in the game. And the Twilight's Hammer Griffin Stand. <laughs> that, that, that Griffin just ruins the whole scary thing there. <laughs> so now, as I promised you, and you can all leave after I say this, uh, I'm going to show you the greatest prop ever made. And I know this because I voted on it, and this is what won. So I have a video that briefly showcases the development of our new player races. So here we have the old world war.